Oh, hello there. Well, welcome back to my series, Drum Room Rescue, where we're taking a look at a project I'm doing to improve my drum room. And I'm really trying to focus on two main areas, acoustic control, that is preventing sound from inside the room going out, as well as sound from outside the room coming in, and acoustic treatment, and that's kind of improving the sound quality here in the space. The last video series, we took a look at uh, how we can design walls, ceiling, and floor assemblies uh, to give us good outcomes in terms of acoustic control. And that really had to do with uh, having the right quantities of mass in the right locations, having some physical separation of some of these assemblies, as well as sealing these assemblies as much as possible in terms of being airtight. Which brings up a great point. So now we've spent time and effort creating this room within a room with the ultimate idea of isolating as much as possible this space from the outer space. Uh, you've built mass here, you've sealed things, and now this is essentially, in a perfect world, this is a completely isolated chamber. Can you see what the problem can be with that? I'll tell you right off the bat, the first problem is you want to be able to breathe. <laughs> so if you spend any length of time in here, um, obviously if you're going in and out, there's an opportunity for some ventilation to get in here. Uh, but if you spend any long uh, time in here, I think you're going to have issues with odors. Uh, you know, you're going to have uh, a couple of undesired uh, environments in here. So. And that dovetails nicely into our next topic, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, and if you've spent a lot of time and effort designing and installing your space to be as airtight as possible, um, you know, you want to make sure that the people that are in there playing and working are as comfortable as possible as well. So I think, uh, I think people have a good concept of what heating and air conditioning is, um, either at their home or in their car. And I think in the residential market, there's not a lot of choice that I think is cost effective. There's two main types of systems. There's a packaged system and then there's a split type system. A packaged system, it means that all the equipment associated with heating and air conditioning is located in a single box. Uh, that's either at the roof or sometimes on grade on a concrete slab. Uh, and usually ductwork is used to uh, connect that piece of equipment to the space that is being conditioned, supplying and returning air to that piece of equipment. The other type is a split type, uh, and there's a couple of different uh, permutations of that, but at its most basic level, you're probably quite familiar where you have sort of a long shaped indoor unit, or we call it a fan coil unit as well, uh, that can be mounted on a wall. Uh, and there's some pipes that connect that unit out to an outside piece of equipment or a condensing unit. And that's a split. So you have two pieces of equipment that provide heating and air conditioning. So I think in terms of the two types of systems, especially in terms of acoustic control, each of them has their kind of pros and cons. I think a package type system, uh, you know, one of the pros is it's a one piece of equipment. It's relatively straightforward. Um, you know, it can be located in a couple different locations. Uh, it's not actually in the space, um, but obviously it's using duct work to provide conditioned air to the space and return air back to the unit. Uh, and that duct work is a nice pathway for air to get in and out of the building, but that also becomes a nice pathway for sound. Uh, so it can get kind of complicated or a little bit more involved in thinking about some best practices associated with ductwork, ductwork design, or the location of equipment when you're using a package system. The second type of system or a split type system, you know, in terms of pros are that you aren't using ductwork usually. There's a couple different permutations of a split system, but at its most basic level, um, it's a ductless system. So you might have a wall-mounted indoor unit or fan coil unit. Uh, and a series of line sets or pipe work that connect that system to the box outside. Uh, so there's no duct work, so that's uh, less openings for sound to be able to travel into the space or outside the space. Uh, but the trade-off is that, uh, and not everyone may realize this, but that type of system, a split type system, especially a ductless system, 
of that term HVAC, HVAC, it provides the H and the AC. It doesn't provide uh, the V, if you will. There aren't really many systems uh, that do that, especially at the residential price point and probably something you would have installed. So you got to think about ventilation. So my specific design approach, I'm going to be putting in a split type system because of the ease of installation. Uh, there are a lot of do-it-yourself uh, systems you can buy now that have line sets pre-charged with refrigerant. It's a little bit more straightforward in terms of design uh, and that use basically single phase uh, 120 volt power, which is what is common uh, for your residents. So there's, it, it's relatively straightforward in terms of installation. One of the things right now, I have a, wi a window uh, we call it a PTAC, but basically it's a window air conditioner here for the space. Obviously for this project, I'd, that's not desired. That's essentially a hole through the wall. So that gets demolished. We have our new wall and we're going to put in what we call a split type uh, air cooled heat pump. And what that is, and everyone that's ever, you've seen these things, right? So all this does is this provides you conditioning in terms of heating or cooling. Um, but for ventilation, you know, I wanted to make sure that the space was comfortable and that I could be in here for several hours working on uh, drum projects and that sort of thing. So let me introduce you to this. So this is a heat recovery ventilator. Uh, and what it does is it provides ventilation to your space. Now, you could possibly set up a system where you just are turning on a fan and dumping air from outside into your space. Uh, and then relieving that air either through another fan or possibly what we call like a barometric damper or a non-return damper. Uh, and that's like a pressure relief. If you could imagine you've sealed this space airtight, if you're blowing an air into a balloon, uh, it's gotta have somewhere to go or you, it will stop filling up. Um, but what this does is it accomplishes all of that, bringing air into the space and relieving the air out and those two, if you think about those two streams, I'm bringing air from outside into my space, I'm taking air from inside my space and I'm bringing them out. There's a, these, these two air streams can be crossed together and they can be crossed together via a air side heat exchanger. And literally, if you can imagine that sort of X pattern in there, you have air from outside coming into the system crossing through this heat exchanger. You have air from inside your space coming through here, crossing through the heat exchanger. Those air streams don't mix, but there is a set of uh, heat transfer points that allow the energy from one air stream to flow to the other. And what that basically means is you're tempering the air. So I live in a desert climate and in the summer it's very hot here. So it could be 115 degrees outside. It would be very uncomfortable if I had a bunch of 115 degree air just coming into my space. But what this does is it's going to have a heat transfer between the air leaving the space, which is hopefully a nice comfortable 75, and the air going into the space, which could be 100, 110. So coming out of the unit, you know, this thing is about 60, 70% efficient. So it'll get about 60 or 7% of the way between 120 and 75 degrees. And basically the result is you are ventilating the space. Uh, you are also relieving air that's in here. Uh, and you're not just dumping hot or cold, if you live in a cold climate, cold air directly into space. You're using this heat exchanger here uh, to temper that air. And this is a, you know, this is a heat recovery ventilator. So the way this system is designed is it, it, it is transferring what we call sensible energy. And that really has to do with a temperature that you would read on a thermometer. What this doesn't transfer is what we call latent energy. And that's really associated with moisture or the water vapor in air. You can get uh, energy recovery ventilators, which have a different design inside. So with this heat recovery ventilator, really what we're doing is we're separating the H and the AC from the V in terms of HVAC. Um, in the industry, that's also called a dedicated, this is a dedicated outside air system, meaning it's managing ventilation on its own. Uh, and I think one of the advantages with that uh, is that 
the air quantities are much smaller. So we, we still are going to be doing with duct work in this application, um, but we're talking about airflow quantities are very low compared to what would be used if you're doing heating or air conditioning. Uh, so duct work is quite small, penetrations are small, uh, and we're going to be looking at some ways that we can help mitigate uh, that those ductwork paths as a path for sound um, using something called a baffle box, uh, or it's also called a sound trap. I need to get air in this space. I need to get air out of this space. How do I do that? Because that means I need holes, and I just spent all this time and effort and money sealing and putting this mass barrier, this room within a room here. How do I do that? Well, this is actually interesting because there's a bunch of ways you can do it. Uh, commercially, they make things, they call them sound traps or sound attenuators. And there's some, they are very expensive and they're really fancy and they're designed by acoustic consultants. And I've seen those done for like theaters or, uh, you know, very spaces that have a very specific needs. Uh, I was just at a theater looking at a system and that incorporated, we call them sound traps. Um, but what I've decided to do is something very similar, kind of more of a DIY version of that. Uh, this is, can be referred to any number of ways. I've, on the Resi side, I've heard it referred to as a baffle box. I have seen it called a sound trap, but conceptually it's the same idea. Um, the idea is that uh, I want to have a device that helps maintain the barrier between inside and outside. Um, in HVAC or HVAC, one of the very important things uh, governing noise um, has to do with what we call velocity or duct velocity. If I had a huge duct, uh, it'll be a lot slower and it'll be more uh, less noisy. But you got to remember, the phys how do I physically install that? This is a garage with physical limitations in terms of space, constructability, and some of those other things. So what, really what this is set up to do is this is coming out of the machine at a, you know, a, a, calm, you know, a reasonable velocity. Uh, but once it hits this box, this baffle box, this is a big enough space to get everything to slow down. Um, and really what you're looking at is the sort of the cross-sectional area and this sort of if I'm inside of this box You know as you can see this this circle that's entering the box is a certain size But obviously it comes into a much bigger size in terms of the passageway uh, And so the air velocity is going to slow Tremendously in here. So really what this is designed for what we would call is about 300 feet per minute uh, and also inside of here, this is a plywood box. These are baffles. You can imagine, really, the air is going to go wherever it's easiest. There's no air that's going to like go to the bottom and turn. It's just it'll go wherever is easy. So it'll be a pathway. But these at least produce angles. Angles help separate uh, the uh, noise. Just like air has to do some hijinks to get through here, uh, the sound waves have to do that as well. So this is a plywood box uh, with these baffles constructed. Inside would be some insulation, uh, rigid fiberglass. Uh, Owen, Owens Corning makes a product called uh, OC703, which is a rigid fiberglass board. This is a one-inch board that helps uh, attenuate noise uh, as, as it, the waves pass through here. Uh, inside of a plywood box and then essentially on the outside of the box is the two layers of drywall similar to the wall construction and really this is to continue that construction material uh, on the box. Now, where did I come up with this? I didn't come up with this, I stole this. Uh, what well, was really, and I was trying to look for some good set of plans for a baffle box. This is a detail I got on the internet uh, from one of the boards and what this actually is uh, there was a guy that was building a studio or, or a music space and he reached out to Rod, Rod Gervais who wrote that book and asked for some help uh, in designing a baffle box for a space so this is a different application in terms of the size of duct and the airflow and some of these dimensions but conceptually this is exactly what I'm going to do although this is in section meaning I'm looking into the wall here uh, mine is going to be rotated 90 degrees, so in my place it would be more like uh, this would look like in plan. 
Uh, and I've just, I just stole this idea. So we've got our plywood, we've got our awnings corning, we've got our baffles, we've got our drywall over here. If you can see our double drywall layer comes to here where you have either the studs or some blocking. We extend the plywood out. That's our surface for mounting this box. And then we're continuing our, our uh, drywall layer for this specific detail. This actually has a discharge grill at the bottom. Mine will have a, another grill that will go, again, in my application, this is almost like we're looking in plan, uh, and that mine will come through the, the wall assembly here. Um, but this is uh, the basic design approach which I stole. Um, and, you know, even in that thing on the internet, there was some very specific dimensions, some dimensional analysis. Again, it's not going to be the same for everybody. But, well, I think one of the key things, uh, and you'll see it in Rod's book, and also in normal HVAC design, uh, is that velocity in the duct or, um, well, velocity in the duct will heavily influence noise uh, in terms of just the breakout noise. So that's noise associated with airflow. Uh, and also having these right angles in terms of the airflow, that actually helps isolate the noise of, say, the fan from getting into this space here because it just makes it harder along with these uh, acoustic surfaces in terms of attenuation. Um, okay, so I'm not an acoustic engineer. I'm not an expert. I'm obviously uh, found some resources. Um, it's interesting looking at it from a residential application where you're trying to keep costs low uh, and there's uh, a limit in terms of budget and materials and applications uh, associated with that. So. Uh, let's go back to the SketchUp model. That is to say that, and these where these holes are isn't exactly right and all that, I just kind of modeled that. But essentially this box is going to go in the garage, it's going to get outside here, these couple of spots, and then I'm actually thinking about how this could be detailed better, you could integrate this into shelves, maybe this with some creative planning could be repositioned. This is nice and easy because there is no attic space for me and I don't want to have to deal with going up into the attic to get something like uh, maintenance or change filters in here. Um, I envisage this as flex duct. Flex ducts great, cheap, uh, although there are a number of issues with it. I won't go into that, but one of the issues in terms of this garage here um, is think of this as like wet noodles. This is just wet noodle like floppy and stuff so you know you got to think about to make it nice and clean and neat you know some hangers and stuff like that and how how that details out because this stuff won't stand up on its own like it does right here nice and pretty but in summary for this design concept we've built a room within a room uh, on the existing slab there's the mass spring mass concept uh, pretty pretty robust construction especially in terms of finishes um, it would be heating and cooling from a split type system. It would be ventilating from a separate ventilation system. That will be part of here. Uh, and that uh, will hopefully, or in all intents and purposes, improve the acoustic control uh, and separation for my live uh, practice room from the outside and from the neighbors. So the heat recovery ventilator is a relatively straightforward piece of equipment. Um, you know, these, it's, it's basically a plug-in type of system. There are a lot of different options in terms of control. Uh, and what I'm going to be putting in is a dedicated controller uh, that comes with an integral timer. Um, so you can turn it on or you can turn it on for a certain period of time. Uh, and that's going to be a wall-mounted switch. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to do very simple controls, um, you could have a switched outlet. That would be one way. So you would just flip a switch inside your space. Uh, and that would give power to an outlet, which would turn this on. Um, and then they have more sophisticated controls. Um, you know, like anything, they're going to have a more advanced uh, options, all depending on what you are comfortable with or what meets your needs. So this particular unit will deliver about 110 cubic feet per minute, which is a volumetric measurement per unit time, uh, at a static pressure of 0.52 inch water gauge or water column uh, and that kind of sounds uh, complicated but, but all I think it's intuitive all that's saying is that uh, the more the harder it is for the fan or the more resistance the fan sees basically the less air it's going to blow through the system 
but as you can tell, this is a uh, relatively small piece of equipment. The air quantities here are relatively small because all we're focused on is ventilation.